a little bit about today's topic. All right, here we now go. We are live and we're also recording ourselves. Okay. So today's topic, if you haven't noticed, it's about the emotional roller coaster that you're going to go through if you're in family court. So, Tim, who's a former therapist, can sort of explain what that emotional roller coaster is about, considering he went through it himself a long time ago. So start well, not, not that long ago. Anyway, so one of the I things- and said, if, Hang on, I think you said you've been divorced 10 years, so that's a long I, ago. <laughs> I have been re- divorced almost a decade. Um, so some of the things is, if you look at the title, it's not for the weak of heart, and it's not. What you have to understand is family court you're talking about your children. You're talking about why one parent is better than the other. At least here in New York State, that's how we work within the family court confine, right? When we're talking about custody, we're having a judge look at and say, that child's better off living with me than my spouse or ex-spouse or ex-girlfriend or whatever. So by design, one parent has to be better than the other. So what does that mean going forward? If you are represented, that means your attorney is going to represent you to the best of their ability, making you the best person to the judge and making the other person look really bad. And conversely, that other attorney's job is to make you look like a pile of dog crap while making their client look great. So you have to be prepared for that. You're going to get things thrown out there that aren't true. They're going to come up with allegations and or they're going to say they've got a really bad temper. Maybe you and your ex got into a fight one time and you, you used expletives and called them cuss names. Well, now it's, you know, he's verbally abusive. You're probably not verbally abusive, but that is the picture they're going to paint. OK, and we're not talking nice little uh, wrapped uh, nicely little words tied in a bow tie where he's verbally abusive. no. It's going to be explicit, graphic. Uh, I call it embarrassing when I hear people talk about it. It's embarrassing as an attorney to type some of the stuff people say to each other. So. Exactly. So keep that in mind because every piece of your dirty laundry is going to be put on display front and center for the judge. And it's going to be made part of a court record. Remember that. So it is there for all eternity. Should anybody want to get those transcripts? Should your child grow up and say, you know, I know my parents went through this really bad divorce or really bad breakup. They fought over me. Uh, I want to know what happened. I'm going to request those transcripts. I'm going to get them. And everything that has ever been said is a matter of court record. They're going to see. So be prepared is what I'm saying. And don't have your feelings hurt. Hang on, Tim. What about your feelings hurt? Like if you hear something that could be absolutely not true, but the way it's presented comes across like you just murdered your favorite pet. Well, you know what? Give the give your attorney a chance to recover and say something in opposition to what they just said. But just remember, there's not a lot of time in some of these court proceedings. So if somebody does a drop mic moment, you have to be prepared just to take the hit and know it's not true. And just like those sayings that are out there, the truth will come out no matter what. The truth is the truth. And, you know, when they say liars lie, but numbers don't lie, there's some. Something like that. Yeah. (laughs) But the same thing. You're you're correct because a lot of what they're going to make the allegations of, they have the burden of proof at trial to prove. They have to submit evidence. So sometimes you have to bite your tongue and put a very thick shield around yourself and and take it and take it and and, and wait and and wait till the end where all the evidence is produced. The other piece is we had this recently happen, okay? Um, a person who's dealing with a family court thing, they're not part of the case, but their history came up and they did some pretty nasty things in the past. I can speak to my own, my own situation and and it's revealing a bit, but that's okay. Right. I made some very bad choices in the past that were held against me in family court during that time. 
And, and I broke the law. I, I did. And I went to jail and I made these things. And well, guess what? It's going to be used against me. And, and instead of being honestly portrayed as what happened, it was, oh, he's a career criminal and he's a deadbeat. And, uh, you know, he's living under the, the bridge with a brown paper bag, which was not true, but it's how it was painted. And it hurt because I had done everything I needed to do to not live that life anymore and to better myself and to become a productive member of society. So to have it thrown back in my face, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I wanted to stand up and scream at the judge and say, no, 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 I'm a great, you can't. So part of being in, in court is acknowledge it, own what you've done, accept it, but you have to put trust in your attorney, right? You have to take a step back and remove your emotions out of it and allow the process to work. Are you gonna be sad? Yes. Are you gonna be embarrassed? Yes. Are you gonna be angry? Yes. It's gonna happen. But your job at that point is to breathe, allow yourself to process it, and in all honesty, disengage. Remember that family court is not always real life. The pictures that are painted by attorneys are made bigger so that they can get their point across. And one, you know, one lawyer looks better to the judge. That way you can win. Right. But just here, I'm going to interject. Remember this, when attorneys uh, repeat what you have told them, they aren't testifying in court. Just remember that. So attorneys are taking at face value the facts that are presented to them by their clients. They're not private investigators that are going to look into whether or not what you've told them is true or not. They're going to do their best. I mean, it, you know, like Tim was saying, you know, if you were convicted of a crime, that's pretty obvious. I mean, if everybody knew about it and it's something locally that happened, well, then it's public knowledge. But for the most part, your attorney is basically going to repeat what you told them if it's relevant in court. And like Tim said, sometimes what they're going to say in court is going to sting and hurt and completely upset you. And for some of you, it's going to be so upsetting, it's going to bother you. And when you leave that court appearance, it's going to completely um, not devastate you, but bother you and eat at you and eat and eat and eat at your emotions. And if you need to see a therapist to help you through the, you know, the process, you know, you don't want the litigation process to destroy you. So if you can't handle what people are saying about you, knowing it's not true, and you can't wait for the process to get to the end where there's a trial or a settlement, please, you need to seek professional help. You know, an attorney can't help you. We're not, a, you know, I'm not a therapist, may no, say I mean, counselor at law, but I don't I, have I am training. Therapist. Tim, I mean, on the other hand, went to school for it and had his license. So, but and here's the thing, though, even as a therapist, right? I, in the position I am in now, I don't do that anymore. But I would recommend, and I, I make the recommendation with every client that we talk to, is that if you're not currently in therapy, you really should start going to therapy because family court attacks your identity. And for any normal human being, whether you have a mental health issue or not, it's going to leave a lasting mark and it's going to be traumatic. There is no way around it. The only exception is if you and your ex are best friends and there's been no mudslinging and you go before that judge and you say, hey, your honor, we just didn't work out. But little Johnny's great between the two of us. We're going to do a 50 50. I don't want support. We're going to have family dinners every Sunday. It doesn't happen. OK. <laughs> Rarely, but it doesn't happen. So be prepared for that. Be prepared for the heartache that's going to come, okay? And the other thing is, you have to remember, there are some things that happen in court, and Tina can attest to this, the laws have changed quite a bit when we're looking at orders of protection and, and these allegations that are made in what's called a family offense petition. The judge has to now 
under the law, take every allegation that's placed in that as true. And they, that's why they issue these orders of protection immediately, because they have to take it as true and then go back and look at what were the allegations and what's the evidence. So there again, it could all be untrue, but your ex got mad at you and you yelled at her and called her, pardon my French, a dumb bitch. So now she's up at the courthouse saying he's threatening my life. The judge reads the petition. He threatened my life. He didn't, but the judge sees it. Boom, you've got a stay away order. Now you're calling me crying. I'm such an awful person. Look what they're doing to me. They're making me look awful. Stop, take a breath, allow the process, but understand that I get that it hurts. And I get that you're feeling really defeated and, and being dragged through the mud. And when you're feeling depressed about yourself, you're going to be prepared for that and, and, and put on a really tough vest. You've got to learn how to just rush it off and say, okay, this is the process. Because if you don't, you will get eaten alive and, and spin your wheels. You just have to protect yourself. And Tim's right. If, if she or he wants to go get an order of protection and you know, people talk, so, and women especially talk with each other and they share their secrets of what's worked in the past, you know, they will have all those key buzzwords in their petition. And when they go to court, because they have to go to court on a family offense petition, they're going to be before a judge who is going to put them under oath and ask them those questions. Sometimes orders of protection don't issue because based on what's presented to them by that person in front of the court doesn't rise to the level of a family offense, you know. It, you just merely disgruntled her, like Tim said, you know, it was somebody making a con make, you know, how about screaming at them and calling them the dumb bitch. Okay. But you know what? Screaming and yelling at people, if it's done mutually, perhaps the judge is going to say, you know what? Arguments happen and this is not enough at this moment to get you that order of protection. So. And exactly. But there are so many variables. That's why I'm saying we can't predict it. But, You've got to just be prepared for the ugly. You have to understand that family court by design is meant to be adversarial. It's just how it's set up. I have to prove that that parent is unworthy of being a full-time parent. And we're simplifying it rather than, I'm, I'm not telling you what the legal standard is, but in the beginning, it's going to just be who can make the other person look worse than the other. And it could be, you know, that one time you said in a text message to your girlfriend, you know, I could really kill myself today. Well, out of context, now you're going to look like you're suicidal. And remember, that might come up in court. But it's like I just said, out of context, and you need to be able to take it and like, you know what, it was out of context, and it's not meaningful. But if the judge renders a decision based on that one text message or that one moment in time, remember, you'll still have a trial, you'll still have your attorney who's going to uncover the fact that that text message that was taken out of context, uh, five or six texts before that. We're talking about you having a bad day and, and you were joking about it, or it's something you say on a regular basis and it really has no meaning. It's just, you know, some people they say, just shoot me. I mean, does it mean yeah. you're really going to shoot yourself? No, it's just the same. So, and, and that brings us to the second part of it that I think we need to understand that it's not for the faint of heart because you need to have sustainability within yourself. Family court matters aren't quick. And if you're looking for an instant relief or an instant action to be taken, nine out of 10 times, it doesn't happen. Uh, Tina and I were joking earlier that sometimes clients get confused and think, well, it's going to be like I see on TV and law and order, you know, that the allegation happens, they do the arrest, all of a sudden they investigate, boom, bada bing, we're before the trial. Oh, there's the conviction all in 50 minutes. It doesn't happen. Family court matters last months, not weeks months. So if you're looking for an immediate vindication or justice, you're going to set yourself up for failure. 
but it more, doesn't occur. But more so, realize each time you go to court, there are other people making comments about you. So you need to be thick skinned. And, mm -hmm. you know, in other videos Tim and I have talked about, court is limited in time. So if one attorney took up, there's only 15 minutes allotted and the judge took up five minutes of that 15 minutes, then the next attorney, you know, on the other side took up five minutes. Well, and then the attorney for your children took up another four. Well, that leaves you with what? one minute, one minute, one minute left. And now, you know, if you're representing a person who just got in quotes tossed under the bus and horrible things were said, well, you're not getting an opportunity, you're getting cut off. And the court's like, well, now we got to schedule another date. We'll be come back on such and such a date. So remember that happens. So it's not any attorney's fault. It's just the way it's scheduled. Um, so if people are saying horrible things about you, if they're saying horrible things about your boyfriend or your family members, just remember it will all come out at the end. You will have to wait until there's actual, uh, actually a fact-finding hearing where those awful things might be that person was pointing the finger at you. Well, in actuality, everything that was said about you was everything that was wrong about them. So just remember that. And people know at the end when, when the truth is going to come out or whether or not they're going to be a good witness or not. But Tim and I need to jump off. So any last words of advice for people just about this being a horrible process and could affect it, it is, negatively? You know what? It is a horrible process, but my advice to people in the family court system is take a breath, take a step back, lean on your support, your family members, those people who really know you, who you surround yourself with. That's where you need to find comfort and just allow the process to go through. And always, always, if you're going to be entering a family court matter, maybe, you know, look at getting some counseling, get into some therapy. There are also some, a lot of support groups for people who are going through this process. Look in your community, see what's out there and, and band together with people who've had similar experiences with you um, and, and prepare yourself for what, what's coming. Exactly. And the final thought for me is remember, your attorney is not a therapist, counselor, and it will cost you lots and lots of money and legal fees if you call your lawyer trying to uh, uh, justify what, yourself. Yeah. Well, justify your feelings. That's not that's not an attorney's job. So save your money if if you can't handle what's being said at, in the beginning, in the middle, and potentially not at the end if if everything's not true, uh, get a therapist and, or just resist calling your lawyer because it'll just cost you financial harm that you really don't need. So good luck, everybody. And we will try this again uh, another time. All right, bye. We're gonna try to hang up now. <laughs>